doing tonight? I'm doing great, Chad. Looking forward to, you know, the first week of new SFL. Yeah, new look. As you can see here, the new uniforms, stadiums, everything is on for tonight. And, Ray, talking about these two teams here, what are you looking for for each team tonight? I'm interested to see Louisiana with their two um, halfbacks for one thing. I'm looking to see more of BDG Hollywood tonight. Yeah, BDG has been really balling out in the preseason as we've seen they had a couple games so far. Louisiana looked pretty good against the Ramblers as well. And it looks like Atlanta will be receiving this kick. And I am just excited as you are, Ray, for this new era of SFL football. The ball is on the tee. And Otis Boudreaux will be ready to kick this off here momentarily. Here in beautiful stacked up stadium. We'll probably be talking about stadium and the uniforms and stuff all night long but it is time to kick it away everybody as we will be taking this from just inside the goal line as i'll be passed out to the 20 down to about the 25 actually we're going to take it and mark them on the 30 yard line that was kyle finnamore with the return and that is going to bring out the atlanta offense led by quarterback number three bryant dynasty yeah, pretty good return there chad from the ball 30 yard line not bad at all no, especially from taking it out of your own end zone. That's a pretty good start, really. So first to 10 here on the 30-yard line. Single back, two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. As that is going to be a pitch to the outside of the BDG, and they close that outside. Breaks a tackle, gets a first down and more down the sideline. And that is going to be a nice big gain there for BDG. Well, number 59 on that line gave BDG a great block and gave the outside completely open to him. Yeah, BDG establishing that run there right off the bat. And we're going to see that same formation here, but just flipping it to the other side. Ball on about the 50-yard line. Dynasty short drop looking, and that is going to be incomplete as it was intended for why not Everlet, one of their new rookies they drafted this past season, right? Yeah, I mean, great pass. I'm not sure why he didn't catch that ball. It was thrown basically right to him. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of coverage in there in the back end. We'll go through the offense and the defense momentarily. Four wide receivers set here. Empty backfield as he's going to send a man in motion. Something new here in the SF season as Siege Falco will be switched to the other side. Dynasty drops back. Good protection. Looking over the middle. That is caught. And that is going to be at the 30-yard line. And that was the, the rookie tight end. Why not Aralette? Yes, on that first, you know, the first complete, first run, BDD got um, 20 yards, and on that pass, they got 20 yards. They're moving the ball down the field in big chunks here, Chad. Yep, and let's go through this offense here. Bryant Dynasty is the quarterback. BDG Hollywood is the running back. Mitchell O'Brien is the fullback. Kyle Finnamore, Siege Falco, Boo Chisholm are the wide receivers. Why not? Arolette is the tight end, along with Phenom Shine, the two rookie tight ends this season for the Swarm. As Dynasty drops back once again, looking short, finds BDG, and that's going to be for a gain of six down to the 22-yard line. At that time, Dynasty got rid of the ball in a hurry. I'm not sure why. He decided to settle for the dump off to BDG Hollywood. Swarm coming out here. Look at those uniforms, Ray, with the, with the Swarm I love logo the on, the, on the leg. Love it's them. so awesome. High formation set here. For the Swarm, there's going to be a counter run to BDG, and that's going to be stopped very quickly in the backfield. That's a loss of a yard, probably, by Brian Craven, the defensive end. Yeah, good pursuit there by Brian Craven, the, the big defensive end, making a great play in the middle of the field. Third and short here for the Swarm. They are just outside the 20-yard line, still at the 22. Single back formation, one wide receiver on each side, two tight ends set as Phenom Shine is going to go in motion. As Dynasty drops back, looking, looks, and finds his receiver. That's Kyle Finnamore down inside the five to the four. First and goal for the Swarm. It's a pinpoint throw there by Dynasty to find his receiver near the end zone. And now you figure yourself first and goal here, Chad. Look at the nice protection there by the offensive line. And just a beautiful strike there right to Fenimore. And it's going to be the first time inside the red zone, inside the goal line here. They are going to be from the three. 
as they are going to go heavy set here. I form my formation here. One solo receiver at the top. He's going to run in motion. Dynasty drops back looking for the for the running back. He does find him. He doesn't get any gain on that. And that's going to be second and goal. Yeah, that was a fullback. Mitchell O'Brien that time with a, with a quick little catch. And first time we've seen his name tonight for sure. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be back in that same formation once again. As you're going to see second and goal. And that's going to be a handoff to BDG. And he has stopped immediately right there at the line of scrimmage. That was Gary Clem coming over from Portland last season making the play. Well, Bazina is showing what they have on defense right here at the goal line. You know, come up with some big stops here, keeping Atlanta, uh, Atlanta out of the end zone. My apologies. I believe Gary Clem actually came from Canton, if I remember correctly. Single back formation, third and goal here. One wide receiver on each side. As you're going to see the tight end, why not air let go in motion? Or Phenom Shine, I'm sorry, in motion. Dynasty drops back. The pocket looks like it's going to move, and it is tipped away, and it was still, oh, that was just, it was tipped. Boo Chisholm made the play, made the catch, but then dropped it right there at the end. Yeah, I thought Boo had that for sure. It was right in the middle of his stomach, and he had, you know, just knocked away by the defender there at the very end of the play. Yep, fourth and goal there. Really interesting play calling there, Ray, as normally you would see some sort I think they should have ran maybe ran three straight runs of the way BDG's been running in the preseason, but they did not right there. Or that's gonna bring out the kicker. Yeah, at least a sweep or something. And the kick is up and it is good. So that is going to bring the first points on the board for tonight's game. Three to nothing, Atlanta with the lead. Yeah, and give credit to Louisiana's defense coming with a big goal on stance. They're not giving up one yard once they got into, you know, third and goal, first and goal. Yep, and now we're moments away from being able to see the offense of Louisiana. A lot of talk this offseason, especially after the draft, where Louisiana traded back into the first round after selecting Dwayne Sam as fifth overall to go back and get Chris Grant Jr., at 12th overall after a trade with Sioux Falls as that's going to be marked at the 30-yard line. So Reggio De Niro with a nice return. So both teams looking good in the return game so far, right? Are they going to use both their halfbacks now, like alternate plays with them or they still have fresh legs on the field at all times? Well, let's just see what they do with it. And that's going to bring out Tommy Utah, the quarterback, to lead the way here for the Revolution as this could be split back spread here formation on the first play for Louisiana. And there's a handoff, and that looks like it is to Dwayne Sammons. He gets the first carry and maybe gets a yard on it. That's Cree Higgins with the stop there, Chad. I'm looking at um, Atlanta's de defense. They have four linebackers. I wonder if they're going to run like a 3-4 defense eventually tonight. We could see some 3-4 defenses. Who knows how they're going to play it out? We'll find out here. I formation, two wide receiver set. Tommy Utah gets forced out of the pocket. Throws, tipped away. Incomplete. Looks like it was intended for the fullback, Cameron Collier. And that time, that was that play was well defended. It had two defenders right in the area, one in front of the receiver, and the ball just got knocked away, almost to the ground. So third and nine here, an early test for the Revolution offense. Bunch set at the bottom of the screen with a solo receiver at the top. Looks like Sammons in the backfield on his own. Utah drops back. Good pocket looking for Sammons. He finds him at the first down and more. Out to about the 46-yard line. First down, Revolution. And there's a halfback um, doing work in the middle of the field there. Nice play. Nice pickup. Yep, nice little route ran there by the rookie. The fifth overall selection in this past draft. As we'll probably be calling his name a lot this season. First and 10 from the 46-yard, 47-yard line. That's a pitch to Sam. It's on the outside. He's got a little bit of blocking there as gets a good amount of yards. Going to set up second and three. Tina's also doing a good job running, you know, moving the ball down the field, moving the chains. Second and three here. Their playbook's wide open. 
And they're going to go single back formation, two tight ends set. Wide receiver at the top of each side. As you're going to see a man in motion, that's Levi Lees, or Levy Lees in motion. As there's the hand off to Sammons again, and the defense with the big stop there. That was a nice tackle by number 23, Moose Papanek. Yeah, Moose Papanek coming back from the backfield to make a good stop and keep, you know, prevent the chains from moving down the field. Yep, and another third down opportunity here for Louisiana, third and one. Ball is on the 44-yard line. I formation set here. Atlanta may be trying to bring the heat. There's a pitch to that side, and look at Sam is just barrel through his defender. Gets a first down and more. He just made somebody in T-Roy game go to the shadow realm. Yeah, I mean, they had him right there, right, right before the line. He just knocks up into 21 on his back and just keeps moving forward, Chad. What that a powerful was, run. That was Jack Napier that he just tossed like a rag doll. Like, what a run there by the rookie. That is how you show that you are in the SFL Professional League now, right? You're not in the SFL. In, you're not in Kansas, Toto. You are now in the SFL, and what a run there by Dwayne Sam. His first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Is that's going to be a pitch to the outside. That's Sam is again. He gets around a block. Nice blocking as he's going to get just about a gain of nine there, and it's going to set up second down. And once again, Jack Napier was there. He just you know, got bounced around him this time. Nice block by number 21. Cameron Collier there to free him up. Yeah, that was a nice pickup block there by Cameron Collier. As he's been around for quite a bit of few seasons here in Louisiana. As they're going to go twin set here on second and one. There's another pitch to the outside to Samus once again. That outside pitch is working. Samus throws him down again. That was Chris Henry this time, the strong safety that couldn't make the tackle. Samus is just looking like a monster out here. Like a wrecking ball out there, Chappie. And look at him. Boom. I, Chris I, Henry I mean, just I, didn't have no words for that. Yeah, I, I was gonna, that's exactly what I was going to say, Ray. I got no words to describe what happened. I just hope family realizes that he's going to be okay. Because, man, that's a vicious shot. First and 10 from the 18 yard line. As we have not really seen Chris Grant Jr. on the field much in this first drive for Louisiana. No, we have not, Chad, not so far. And that's gonna be a pitch once again to Samus and they're gonna be able to call him there. And he's not gonna run anybody over that time. Moose Papano in there with the gang tech. Finally, you know, he, 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 he keep him less than five yards for probably the first time on this drive. Yeah, when you get two running backs in there in the top 12, you're going to be featuring those two backs quite a bit, and that's exactly what they're doing. Atlanta looks like they might be bringing the heat here with a blitz. Let's see what happens. That is going to be a handoff. That is actually to Chris Grant Jr. That's the first time we've called his name, and he doesn't get any yards up front. And Joshua Williams with a big tackle in the middle of the field there. No gain. So another third down test once again here for Louisiana. They've converted on all ties so far. Third and seven here from the 15-yard line. Bunch set formation. Looks like they've tried to do a cornerback blitz, and it's going to be picked Ooh. up, but incomplete, tipped away by the defender. And I really like that play call. They're sending the cornerback on a blitz, right? Yeah, number 44 was there to you know, make a great defensive play on the receiver. And looks like, you know, Losing that settle for a field goal here. And that is going to bring out Otis Boudreau, one of the best kickers in the entire SFL. Here from 32 yards out, as you can see, the new camera angle this year on kicks. And it is up and it is good. So Louisiana comes up short of a touchdown, but they're able to tie the ball game here at three apiece. Yep, like, like we're back to the start. 0-0, zero, zero. now it's just 3-3, three three, so... Both teams you know, move the ball well on the field. They both settled for field goals. So great job by both defenses. Want to give a shout out to Jax Data on the line tonight. Louisiana, 10 and a half point favorite. And the over under being 60 and a half. 
And so far in this first quarter, it's been just three to three as this ball is going to be taken from about the one yard line. Fenimore with a nice return. He breaks a tackle, breaks to the outside. That's to the 35 to 40, the 45, and he's going to be tackled right about midfield. They're going to mark him. In what a return there by Fenimore, first down. Wow, somebody getting great field position starting your on the 50 yard line chad yeah just a nice little i mean just broke that tackle right there nice little spin move and got to the outside and was able to really just a lot of these sfl players have done a great job of learning where that sideline is and being able to maneuver around that sideline it's going to be fantastic to watch these players do that all season long as that's going to bring out brian dynasty once again let's see how they handle this offense here great field position as you said ray starting midfield Three wide receivers set here to begin. And there's a handoff to BDG, and he's not going to get very far as Clem there with a tackle again to three. Yeah, BDG got skinny, but there was nothing there for him. Yeah, he, the offensive line kind of held up pretty decently there. They created a hole for him, but Gary Clem was able to be there to close it up quickly. As here's our eye formation, eye joker wing, I believe. Second is seven, as that's going to be a handoff to BDG. He gets to the outside, but Clem there once again making the tackle. And that's going to set up third and a manageable four yards. And that time, BDG got back, he got held up behind his own blocker there, number 77. He was there, but he just couldn't get around him. Third and four here, split back formation for the Swarm. As it looks like Louisiana's going to play back, expecting to pass, and that's what they do. Dynasty all day to throw. He makes the catch, Ooh, but the fun. defense was able to make a tackle. A gate of nothing, and that is going to be fourth down here for the Revolution. Lucky he got forward progress there because he went. He ran the wrong direction, Chad. Yeah, they definitely gave him forward progress for sure. And, <laughs> and that is going to bring out the punter here for Atlanta as they're going to try to pin him deep in their own territory. Let's see what they can do. And that is a beautiful punt. Looking for the corner here as they are going to receive Ow. and be tackled immediately. Surprising that Reggio De Niro didn't call for a fair catch, and they're going to be marked at the 13. Yeah, great, great hang time. Gave us, you know, players probably time to get down the field and basically got one yard on that return, I think. Yeah, they may have. If they've got a yard, that was a miracle if they got a yard. He looked like as soon as he caught, he was just tackled immediately. The first and 10 from the 13-yard line. One wide receiver at the top of the screen on each side. They're going to motion out the fullback. Utah drops back to pocket, collapsing. He's going to find his man. That is Liam Hammer. That's his name tonight for a gain of three. And that's happened. The defenders actually broke through the line. They somebody pursuing the quarterback. He just got rid of the ball in a hurry. Just dumped it off for a three-yard gain. Yeah, the defensive line was really getting close to Utah on that play. And so good call there by Utah to dump it off. Second is seven. As Utah drops back once again. Looking, looks over the middle, finds his oh. target. It was in the hands of Cameron. And I think the pressure of the defense got to him because he dropped it. I think Matt, Moose Papineau hit him at the right exact time. He was catching the ball. He was not the ball loose that time, Chad. But great throw by, Dennis, by um, Utah. Yeah, it was, it was a great throw, and I believe it's really a great route ran, but just Cameron Collier could not hold on to the ball. As his third to seven here, Bunch set at the top of the screen. No pressure coming from Atlanta, but then they changed their mind. They're going to bring some. As Utah's getting flushed out of the pocket, he's going to move to the outside. He's going to throw it deep down the middle, and that is caught! What a play! Liam Hammer, the catch, that's a first down. Wow, Chad, the mobility of Utah in that pocket there, getting breaking free from all the defenders in this perfect pass down the field. The Let's Hammer. look at this replay right here. I mean, he was flushed to the outside and just threw a perfect pass. He had to make sure that Moose Papineau was going to get to that, and Liam Hammer, we know that Liam Hammer can make catches. He's just used to catching big bombs. And what a catch there to end the first quarter. And that's where we are right now, end of the in the bayou, the score is three to three. We'll be back here on SFL on YouTube. And we are back here in Louisiana. Chad Roland, Rochelle Colston here in the boot tonight. 
Cameron Irvine producing the game for us. Thank you, Cam, once again for all the hard work. We can actually see the fruits of your labor with all the new textures and everything else and everything that you've done for the game. So thank you very much for all the hard work. As you're going to see Hammer going in motion there to make it a twin set. As Utah is going to roll out. And he's going to find his receiver. Oh, oh, just out of the hands of John Michael Suddeth. As that was the first time he was targeted. And it looks like Craig oh, no. is down. And he was involved in that play on the defense there. And just not getting up. That's not good news for uh, Atlanta. No, that is not good news at all. Because they've only got three linebackers on their roster. And so now you're going to have to step up to see somebody play here. Shaw Allen and Diamond Blackwell, the other two linebackers they have. That was their inside linebacker, Chad. Yep, that was their that was their middle linebacker. So we'll see how that plays out for them. As it's going to be second and ten, maybe Louisiana takes advantage of that opportunity. Here's split back formation. Utah drops back pressure in his face, and what a throw! What a catch there, Lyric to Vinci with his first catch of the day. Now on their first drive, it was all run, run, run. Now it's all pass, pass, pass. And Utah getting the job done. Yeah, maybe maybe Tommy Utah went to went to the head coach Gerald Smith and was like, "Hey, look, I need I need to throw. My arm's getting a little weak, right?" And so was able to get in there and make some nice throws so far. And it's probably throwing that defense off of Atlanta. So first and ten from the thirty-four or from the twenty-six yard line. It's going to be I-formation set. Utah drops back to pocket. It's going to collapse once again and was able to look for Collier. He drops it again, and that's going to be second down. And when defense wouldn't have that very well covered, Chad, they had the defenders all around the receiver, and maybe he just, you know, got afraid of the hit if he made the catch. I'm not sure what happened there. I mean, the offensive line here, the, def the offensive line of Louisiana is trying to hold as much as they can. But this defensive front four is doing a good job of trying to get pressure to Utah. But he has been making the most of his opportunities. High spread formation here for the Revolution. Utah, short drop, looking, finds Collier. He kept the hand of it that time. As oh. he was just a gain of 10. Basically, he's just maybe an inch or two away. As they're going to mark a third in inches. Yeah, I, think, I thought he had it, Chad. Maybe we'll see a challenge flag here from Louisiana. Well, let's see if they want to call a challenge flag or not. My guess is it's Probably not. As that's going to set up third and inches here. Two back set for the Revolution. That's going to be a handoff, a draw played up to Chris Grant Jr. He gets the first down. Mark about the 10, maybe the 9-yard line. And great, great play call by Louisiana. Putting a fresh back in there with fresh legs. And he's just powering three to get the first down. Basically untouched. That's one thing I think that a lot of SFL teams will see this season is that the draw plays are going to be much more effective here in the SFL. As you're going to see first and goal here from inside the 10-yard line. Offset eye. As that's going to be a pitch to the outside to Sam as he barrels through another player. That was Blackwell this time. And it looks like there may be an injury oh. as Sam is down. Uh-oh. That is not good if you're the Revolution. Dwayne Sammons, he has been a, just a force to be reckoned with in his first half, is down. Let's hope the injury is not too serious here for the Revolution. But fortunately for Louisiana, they do have a backup running back. A contract that is, one. That is true. You do have the 12th overall pick, Chris Grant Jr. coming in. So Chris Grant Jr. will start being the bell cow here for the Revolution. You hope that maybe Sammons could come back in, but let's see how that plays out. Three wide receiver set here for the Revolution, second and goal. As that's going to be a pitch out to Chris Grant Jr. And look at this. The defense was able to swarm on him and get him. Chris Henry leading the way there. What a play by the defense. And your strong safety come and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage. Interesting play call there by the Revolution doing a pitch in that situation. Going to the other side as it did not work out for them. Third and goal here from the 10 as Utah drops back. He's going to fire over the middle. That is Ooh. caught. Oh, it is dropped incomplete. Oh, my gosh. That was so close. Adam Banks, the first time he's been targeted tonight. And he could have had that if he would have just got his hands over. I thought he did have it, Chad. Oh, it's on the ground. Okay. Yeah, he, he definitely had it, and the roll 
definitely. And well, maybe he never had it the whole time. Now that I've seen that other replay, as it looks like he just dropped it. I mean, when you get an opportunity to like that, he could have easily made that catch, I think. But it's going to be fourth and goal, and that is going to bring out Otis Boudreaux to kick this 27-yard chip shot. Here for the Revolution to take the lead. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. Good. So Otis Boudreau, once again, 12 plays, 78 yards. A good drive there by the Revolution. Just falls short, Ray. Yeah, I mean, they march the ball down the field one more time, and the defenses are doing a good job as we get to the goal line here. So who knows the both defenses on both sides? And this has just been a back and forth defensive, really a defensive battle all game long. You get good drives led by each team, Ray. And then they get in something about being inside that red zone, and all of a sudden the defenses just show up and and just ball out. As that is going to be down there, Atlanta will get it to the twenty yard line. Fenimore too deep to return. Oh, I think it's our first touchback the whole game. Yeah, it is the first touchback the whole game. You're absolutely right. And Otis Boudreaux booted that thing down the field. So let's see how Atlanta responds here. Seven fifty six to go here. In the second quarter, Louisiana 6, Atlanta 3. Split back spread formation here for the Swarm. As Louisiana's going to bring the blitz up the middle and force BDG Ooh. to the outside. What a play there by the Revolution defense. Talk about that play there, Ray. That was just being a very aggressive defense by Louisiana. I mean, they, they brought the house and then just got BGD trapped in the backfield. I mean, that linebacker timed that blitz perfectly. Because as soon as Chris, as soon as BG got the ball, he didn't know what to do with it. And that's gonna be a toss to the top. That is to the Boo Chisholm there, the receiver. That's the first actual catch I think he's had all night. He's, he's, I mean, Boo's been having a great preseason, so I'm, not, I'm surprised it's his first catch. The guy yeah. big took a yardage there on, the, on on that play. That's a good job. Yep. So third and six here. The Revolution look like they're gonna play back. Bunch set formation at the bottom of the screen. As Dynasty's going to roll out, he's going to look and find his target. He does. That is going to be just past the 40. That is Siege Falco with the first down catch. Well, I'm sure we have everybody's screaming call right now. Oh, yeah. Everybody back in Atlanta just screaming the call as Siege Falco with a catch there to get the, to extend the drive. First and 10 here for the Swarm. Ball is on the 44-yard line. High formation here. Dynasty drops back looking and oh. hits the tight end in the back. As it looks like why not Arrowlet was not ready for it. Um, I mean, to me it looked like a great play. The, the tight end just never turned around for the ball. I think they got their signals crossed there, Chad. I think his name should be now Why Not You Ready. <laughs> That's second, funny. Second and 10. I thought of that just now, Ray. Second <laughs> and 10 from the 44 as Dynasty drops back, looking and finds his receiver. That's going to be Boo Chisholm with the first down catch. Here goes Boo on the move now. Great route. Great throw by Dynasty. Yeah, Boo is one of those guys that he gets one catch, and then all of a sudden he'll, he'll blink, and then he's got six catches for like over 100 yards. So you got to be careful. With a guy like Boo Chisholm, he has been around for quite some time, made a name for himself, one of the best receivers in SFL history, for sure. He's definitely not in the Hall of Fame for, you know, for not doing anything. That is true. First and 10 from the 45. Twins set at the top of the screen. Dynasty, short drop, looking, finds his tight end. That is why not Aroletti makes the catch this time. He was ready for it. Well, that time, he actually saw the ball coming to him. He actually turned around. So, you know, nice little route in the middle of the field. Just right in front like, of the defender. Yeah, just looked like a simple go route there for the tight end, and it worked very effectively. As that's going to bring first and 10 here, just under six minutes to go here in the first half. As Dynasty drops back, the pressure getting to him. He's going to look, finds his wow. target, Chisholm once again, in front of three defenders, and Chisholm makes a play first down Atlanta. You know, Chad, right now, I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, Atlanta's doing this one-dimensional, mostly a pass offense right now. When you got BDG in the backfield. 
Yeah, it's pretty interesting that they're going in this direction. I mean, BJ is not really get going either. And I think with they're just playing with what the defense has given them, and they're probably just goal to shut down BDG. But look what Louisiana's doing here. They had a lot of guys <laughs> boxed. That's a weird defensive formation we're seeing right there, Chad. Well, they're able to adjust out of it. Oh, and it is going to bring a man in motion here. As it looks like Louisiana will be playing some man coverage. As Dynasty drops back, quick throw, and that's going to be oh, intercepted. No. Chuck Diesel, the inside linebacker, there with a the pick. Yeah, they had that, you know, that middle of the field, and the, and the box just about bunched up so much you almost not try to avoid throwing the defender at that point. I mean, he was just looked like Chuck Diesel was just reading the eyes of Bryant Dynasty the entire time. And I, I have to give a shout out here to the crowd as they had shirts that said, uh, only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> so shout out to the Louisiana crowd with the nice merch there. As it's going to be first to 10 from the 15 yard line, you're going to see hammer in motion here in the split back formation. It's never great to throw an interception, but if you're going to throw one, do it when you know, you're on that side of the field. That is true, and that is going to be tipped away by the defender incomplete, and that's going to be second down. I think that was Saw Allen got his hand on the number 40, the outside linebacker. Yep, that was indeed Shaw Allen. Let's go through the defense here. Mickey Gibson and Billy Ray Valentine are the defensive ends. Leo Jefferson and Joshua Williams are the defensive tackles. Cree Higgins, Shaw Allen, and Diamond Blackwell are the linebackers. Jack Napier, Jay Miraculous are the corner. Moose Papineau and Grant Hardaway are the free safeties. And Chris Henry is your strong safety. Second and 10 here from the 15-yard line. As Utah is going to roll out, he's going to look. Looks up the middle. Finds his tight end. That's John Michael Suddeth. And that's a first down for the Revolution. Look at that great throw by Tommy Utah there. To find his big tight end. We ran a great route in the middle of the field. And, you know, tight end on linebacker. Tight end wins. Yeah, he was covered pretty well there by the linebacking core for Atlanta, but he just was able to make the play. As it's going to bring the Revolution out here to the to the 33-yard line. That is Utah. He's going to drop back. He's going to look short. Finds his fullback in camera. As he's going to get a gain of three. That was a you know, strange-looking play, but it's like a little quick dump and pick up the three yards. Yeah, there must have been that must have been a good coverage play there by the Swarm defense as there was nobody open down the field, so he hit the check down quickly with Cameron Collier as that's going to be second and seven here for the Revolution. Two backs in the backfield, two wide receivers at the top of the screen. Utah, short drop, looking quick, fires and finds Lyric Da Vinci. That's going to be a first down for the Revolution. Well, Utah's getting rid of the ball in a hurry, Chad. I mean, he's like, it's a one-two and one-two throw. It's like, wow. Well, that's, that's we not talk, affecting him at all. We talked about it earlier, Ray, as this defensive front is really putting the pressure. So I think the coaching staff here for Louisiana has been adjusting to that and having Utah be able to, to throw quicker out of the pocket. It's been working for him so far. Definitely has. First down here for the Revolution. Chris Grant Jr. in the backfield. As Utah, short drop, finds Ooh. his fullback, but he's in and out of his hands. It's going to be second down. Press defense there with a um, big hit, not the ball loose. Number 44. It's Chris Henry. Yep, Chris Henry again. Coming from the strong safety position to make that hit. Getting a nice little look there of the stacked up stadium. Looks beautiful here down in the bayou. The fans certainly love the new digs. Second and 10 here, single back in the backfield. As Utah drops back, the pocket was getting close to collapsing, but nice play there by the defender to be able to tip that away. I was number 24. I'm not sure who that was. Back up corner, back, I guess. <laughs> Thank that you, Cam. Grant, that was Grant Hardaway there with the deflection. As that is going to be third and ten. Bunch set formation here. Utah drops back. The pocket collapsing right in front of him. Tipped away Ooh. again. That time, Chris Henry with the deflection. And that's going to be fourth down for Louisiana. 
Yeah, Utah did a great job of winning that D line because they were coming at him. He threw that ball under pressure, but just a little bit too short. Chris Haney with, with, with a great pass deflection there. And that is going to bring out the punt unit here. As they're going to try to pin Atlanta deep. And they're going to call for the fair catch there. About the 13-yard line. That is where it's going to be. Boot Chisholm was going to be set to return. But they are going to bring out the Atlanta offense. So we're getting close here to the end of the first half, Ray. Let's see what Atlanta does here if they want to try to score quick to maybe get an opportunity here. As it's going to be first to 10 from the 13. Dynasty drops back, looking, fires over the middle, finds his target. And that is why not Aralette there with the catch. That's down for the swarm. As Aralette there with the nice one handed grab. And as you can see, the numbers today for Dynasty 10 to 14, 128 yards, only one pick so far in this game. I formation here once again. As Dynasty's going to drop back and looking, and that is going to be caught by BDG. Gets a little bit of yards there, and that's going to be about seven, second down. Now you have Dynasty feeling the pressure and dumping off the ball to beat DBG, but it's a gain of seven yards, so not a bad play after all. Second and three, heavy set formation here for the Swarm. And that's going to be a handoff to BDG. And oh, I'm kind of intrigued by this because it looks like there's an injury on the field, as that is Tommy Wilbrock Boosie. The rookie linebacker goes down with an injury. The injuries that have been, you know, drastic here. We've had three people injured down before the first half. It's over. Yep, and that is going to set up third and inches. I was curious if they were going to give him the first down or not. They did not. Nope. And it's going to be third and inches here. Looks like you're going to have O'Brien and BDG in the backfield. Look for BDG to get the rock here. The crowd in Louisiana here on their feet cheering for their revolution. They're going to try to press at the outside. BDG, did he get it? They're going to give it to him. They gave it to him there, Ray. That was close. I mean, Louisiana had that box stack. Chad, they were waiting for their run. They were ready for their run, and BDG barely gets his first down. Yep, they're going to go ahead. There's no challenge there from the Revolution coaching staff. Probably the best call. As it's going to be first and 10. And Dynasty drops back looking, finds his tight end over the middle, and that's going to be down. Why not Aralette once again? I guess he's not. He, he's ready now, Chad, so you can't use his other nickname. Yeah, I can't use Why Not You Ready. I, <laughs> it's going to catch, I'm telling you. It's going to be a catchy nickname for him. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know who you are, but I'm sorry. <laughs> and we are here at the two-minute warning here down in the stacked-up stadium. The score is 6-3, to three, Louisiana, with barely a lead here in this defensive battle. We'll be back here on SFL on YouTube. And we are back here down in Stacked Up Stadium. Chad Rowland, Rochelle Colson in the booth. Cameron Irvine producing the game for us. Thank you once again, Cam, for all the work. As Dynasty drops back, looking short, and it hits him. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is, Ray. As it looks like it's going to be pass interference on the defense. That's our first call tonight. We've been seeing that call lately a lot in SFL, SFL games in preseason, so... Yeah, but they're going to take a look here. And this was Rolliman Hood, I believe. And not really seeing exactly where the pass interference call was. Um, looks like he might have been behind him a little bit, but the refs must have saw some sort of incidental contact. And it's going to give Atlanta here a fresh set of downs. If you're Louisiana, you don't want to give Atlanta anything right now. I mean, the game is very close. Almost at halftime, we've only scored nine points in this whole entire game. And they're going to send a man in motion. That is going to be BDG Hollywood going out in the slot. 
Interesting little dynamic here as Dynasty drops back, looking, fires, and he finds Kyle Fenimore. That's a first down past the 30-yard line. Great play by Atlanta there, getting the first down, moving them, you know, keeping the ball in their hands in the, a few minutes left before the half. That was a nice little route ran there by Kyle Fenimore. As that is going to be first and 10 here inside the 30 to 29-yard line. Three wide receiver set. And that's going to be a handle to the fullback, Mitchell O'Brien, as he gets a gain of four. Is that his first carry of the night, Chad? That is his first carry of the night. He picked up the four yard second, very manageable now. Interesting formation there for the Swarm, as they had Mitchell O'Brien in the backfield all by his lonesome. Second and six here, heavy set formation. They are going to send O'Brien in motion to the other side. And that's going to be a handoff to BDG. Goes up the middle, gets a nice little game, but that's going to be third down and one as, Atlanta, as it looks like Atlanta is going to be calling a timeout. And that play didn't have anybody full, Chad. They had no receivers, two people in the backfield. Everybody lined up on the line for blocking and you know, just short one, you know, short just one yard from the first down. Yep, everybody knew where they were going to go. There's the formation once again with O'Brien in the backfield. They're going to send him in motion. Mm. As he's now just side-by-side side there with one of the wide receivers. As going to be dropped back, looking over the middle, finds his target. That's why not Airblade down to the five, and Atlanta's going to get another timeout. Well, why not Airblade's making a name for himself on this drive? I mean, he's got a couple of passes now. You know, besides that's one little mistake where the ball hit him back at the head, he's doing a great job on the field tonight. Yep, why not Arlette doing very well in his pro debut? I mean, we could say the preseason's a debut, but we know the regular season's when it counts. And that's going to be first and goal inside the five. As Dynasty drops back, looking for the pass, and that is Ooh. going to be tipped away, but there is going to be a flag on the play again. Ooh, pass interference in the end zone, Chad. Yes, and sir. That is going to be what it is, pass interference, and it is on number 22 of the defense. That's Ethan Arthur there with it, and that's going to put him right there on the goal line. Wow, Chad, you bet to have the ball on the one-yard line. Well, let's see what Atlanta does with this. First and goal, they get a fresh set of downs out of it as well. BDG in the backfield all by his lonesome. Dynasty drops back for a pass. He's going to look for Hollywood, finds him on the screen, but nowhere to go. As Arthur right there making up for the for the pass interference call. As looks like the Swarm are going to go no huddle here. They lost the yard on that play, Chad. Dynasty drops back, tipped away, and wow. almost intercepted. That's incomplete. That was a dangerous throw there by Brian Dynasty. Yeah, Brian Dancy, I'm not sure what you saw, but all I saw was defender. There was no receiver there. <laughs> no, there was nobody around at all. I don't know who he was intended for. I don't know if a guy was sitting in the back chilling or what, but nobody there, Brian. Nobody was home. As it's going to be third and goal here. Spread formation here for the Swarm. Is it going to send Chisholm in motion? Dynasty drops back, throws, and it's tipped away, and that's going to be incomplete. Fourth and goal, Blake B. Craze with the deflection. And I got to tell you, Ray, three straight passes with not a single run in there. I'm really intrigued by that play call. Confused, Chad. You have a premier back on the one-yard line, and you're throwing the ball three times in a row? Come on. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Interesting play calling there by the Swarm as they're going to be looking to tie this game from the 19. This is a chip shot. Kick is up, and it is good. So the game is tied here at 6. 13-play drive there for the Swarm, and they only got three points out of it. they got to be disappointed. Right? I mean, you, you you were given a gift. You were given the ball on the one-yard line, and then you throw the ball to the defenders basically three plays in a row. I'm just still shaking my head. Yeah, especially when you have... A back like BDG. I mean, even Mitchell Bryan showed on that drive, Ray, they carry the ball for four yards. Right. Right. So you should have been able to just use him right there as De Niro's going to take this from inside the end zone. And it's going to be spun to the outside. Got hit hard there, thrown. Like, he, was, even... he was airborne, Chad. I mean, he yeah, left he... his feet when he was hit. 
Yeah, he got hit hard here. Let's watch this replay once again. And just look at that right there. I mean, just oh my gosh, oh, gosh, man! That, I hope you, that man I hope, has a family. I hope you're okay. I hope he's gonna survive that one. That was a hit. As we'll let's see what the Revolution do here. Are they just gonna run out the clock and go into halftime, or what? They're gonna try to maybe do a quick strike. Let's see what they try to do here. As Atlanta's gonna bring the pressure up the middle. Utah's forced out of the pocket. Looks short, and that was tipped away. That looked like. Shot Allen there with the deflection. That's great. Mills playing good defense. Well, both teams are playing good defense. I mean, our over is 60.5. We have 12 points so far at halftime. Yeah, the over-under, unless they just all of a sudden defenses don't show up in the second half, Ray, I think that definitely the under. I'm curious to see what injuries are at halftime, Chad. Had yeah, a couple we'll of them tonight. Yeah, we'll definitely be finding out from the SFL doctors what those injuries are because we have not seen Salmons come back in the ballgame. Neither Cree Higgins as well. As De Niro's going to go in motion here. Louisiana, I mean, I mean, they're showing blitz and they're, you know. Utah drops back, looking and down the silent. That's a that's going to be another pass appearance. This time on well, Atlanta. Yeah, I saw that one. Chris Henry was all over him. Yeah, Chris Henry was not giving him room to breathe. And now you're in a different situation here, Ray. You get a fresh set of downs, but now you are on. The, the Revolution side of the field or on the Atlanta side, almost on the Atlanta side of the field. And it'd be interesting to see what they do here if they just try to run this out. 21 seconds to go. I formation set here for the Revolution. They got all three timeouts. I mean... You do got plenty of time. Utah drops back, looking short. Finds Collier. Gets across midfield. And they're going to go no huddle. I think they're just going to try to go into half time with this. Apparently. 10 seconds to go. As Utah drops back, looking, it finds his receiver short. That was Da Vinci. And they are indeed up. They're going to set it up here. Three seconds to go. They call their first time out, maybe looking for something deep in the end zone now. Yeah, I guess they're going to do like a Hail Mary play. See if they actually you know, get a catch in the end zone here with three seconds left. Yep, Tommy Utah today in the first half, 10 to 21, 136 yards. No TDs, no picks. And if they're going to try to go deep in the end zone, this is not the formation to do it. Heavy formation set here. They're going to pitch it to the outside to Chris Grant Jr. He's going to be able to maybe get a few yards on that, get a first down, but the clock will run out. And we are going to head into halftime here in Louisiana as this game is tied. It's been a defensive battle the entire time, Ray. Six to six. Yeah, watch these, but these offenses during preseason, they were pretty you know, high scoring. Now we have a game as a defensive block, basically. Yeah, but let's talk about what has been a takeaway for you in this half so far, Ray? Well, takeaway for me is Atlanta being mostly one dimensional going to this pass game, even when they're on the one yard line. So I'm a little confused by that. But we see as, you know, playing a pretty balanced offense, they're running their passing. Both teams are doing a good job on offense, but defense are even doing better. Yeah, I mean, you, and I think you really nailed it on the head. Something so far, I mean, you know, this has been a pass-heavy offense here for Atlanta. Why not Arrowlet, the rookie tight end, was able to get five catches in the first half. I think he's going to probably be the halftime player there, and it is indeed. Why not Arrowlet, five catches for 76 yards. Look for him, Ray, probably to make a big contribution here in the second half. Uh, maybe we'll see BDG. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you have to get the run game going. You can't be one-dimensional this whole game. Yeah, you, you definitely got to get the run game going. I mean, right now the game is still tied. But you definitely got to get the, you know, you got to get the run game going. You're not out of it by yet. And we're going to be checking the injuries here from the there SFL we go. doctors. As Dwayne Sam is there with a torn bicep. And Tommy, it looks like Dwayne Sammons is out for the game. That's not good if you're the Revolution, as well Brock Busey is going to be probable back into the game, as well as Cree Higgins will eventually come back to the game. So good news there for the defensive side. But for the offense, Ray, Dwayne Sammons, the number five overall selection in the draft, is not going to be in the game anymore. That's going to hurt Louisiana's offense, on the, especially on the run game. But you do have you know, Chris Grant Jr. He's a, he's a good backup for him. Yeah, Chris Grant Jr. is no slouch, right? Let me let me just re re reiterate that right now. He is definitely no slouch at all. He is somebody that could come in, and we, you know, me and you both, Ray, have called 
SFL in games all last season. And we know what Chris Grant Jr. can do. And so the Revolution are going to start from their own 20-yard line. As that is going to bring out the new the offense here for the Revolution. Without Dwayne Sammons, we know he's not going to be back. So a lot of this run game, if they establish it, it's going to be on the, on the feet of Chris Grant Jr. First and 10 from the 20. Twin set formation at the bottom. Atlanta looks like they're going to bring the blitz. They are. There's a pitch to the outside. The Grant Jr. gets stuck behind Collier and loses three yards. Good pressure there by the defense. Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm not sure, but same as look a lot faster than Higgins than, than, than Chris Grant Jr. is. Maybe I'm seeing things wrong. I mean, I've looked at the stats, but it's going to leave me a little bit slower. And, and maybe that Sammons is more of a power back compared to Chris Grant Jr. is more of a what we call a, a speed back, right? Utah drops back looking, Ooh, finds nice his target, and that's a nice pass there. And that was caught by Adam Banks, first down for the Revolution. Yeah, great play. Get the first down. I mean, he's right open in the middle of the field. I mean, literally wide open. Great pass by Utah. Yep, an interesting thing about these running backs as we looked it up is Dwayne Sammons is actually faster than Chris Grant Jr. So kind of interesting to see how the speed plays out here. Maybe Grant Jr. is more of the power back. He can indeed boil some people, that's for sure. First to 10 here from the 35. As Revolution drop back. Utah looking over the middle, tipped away. That is going to be incomplete. Number 55 got his hands on that time. Pretty dangerous throw there. Yeah, that was indeed a dangerous throw. That's number 55. He's been taken in for Cree Higgins with Cree Higgins still injured here, hoping to get back into this game momentarily. As it's going to be second and 10, split back formation here for the Revolution. As they go to send Grant in motion. Utah drops back, the pocket looking clean. Utah throws, and that's going to be almost by Chris Grant Jr. It looks like the defense got there first, tipped it away incomplete. Yeah, great coverage by the Atlanta defense. They had two defenders right on the receiver. Great play. Yep, great play there. Bunch set formation at the top of the screen. Utah drops back. Williams is getting to oh. him, and they're going to take him down. That is the first sack of the ball game for either team. And that was Leo Jefferson getting in there, and also Joshua Williams bringing the pressure as well. And that time, two of them broke free, broke through the line. Utah didn't have a chance. I mean, boom. Yeah, Joshua Williams right there. He beat Napoli. He beat Ross Napoli there, the, the uh, left guard, I believe, or left tackle. And was able to, to get enough pressure to where really Utah couldn't go anywhere. Leo Jefferson came right up the middle and was able to take him down. And that's going to force a punt here for the Revolution. A nice punt indeed, as that's going to be taken from the 30. And what a leg there by the punter for Louisiana. Definitely a great kick by the punter there. Now, so you, you force um, you know, you force a fourth and 16, you force him to punt. Tie game. Defenders are still playing really hard out there. Let's see what Willian can actually move the ball this time. Yep, and let's see what they do. We've been talking about getting BDG involved. And that's going to be the ball on the 35-yard line. And I formation set here. Dynasty drops back. He's going to look for BDG. He finds him. He's able to Ooh. break one tackle, but not the second, as Dante Grimm brings them down. Second and ten. Yeah, BDG is struggling when he does get the ball, even on his little short passes. Defense is just swarming to him. Two players at a time. Second and ten, twin set formation here. Two tight ends at the bottom of the screen. As Dynasty drops back, looking fires. He was heading. Looked like for the tight end there, but it was incomplete. That ball was thrown in heavy traffic. Lucky it wasn't intercepted. It falls from to the ground there. And that is going to be incomplete. Third down and 10 here for the Swarm. Let's 
Four wide receiver set here. This may be the first time we've seen four wide tonight for the Swarm. As Chisholm's going to go in motion. To give them a quads look here. Hmm. Dynasty drops back. The pocket oh. collapses, and that is going to be back there for the Revolution. That's Chance Wall, the defensive tackle, to force the fourth down. And now we see in sacks. Tonight we've seen two now in this quarter alone. Yeah, we've been talking about the defensive pressure. They just keep adding it, but not getting to the quarterback. Now they have. They have been getting to the quarterback now, and that is going to for force a fourth down here for Atlanta. They're going to have to punt it away. Yeah, I mean, the fight in the has been pretty tough tonight. They're getting a little bit tired. So back and forth here in the start the second half as Sacks ending both drives there for each team. As the Revolution going to start here on their own 38-yard line, De Niro. This game has been all about defense, Chad. Yeah, this has been a defensive slugfest for sure the entire night. Hoping to see maybe one of these offenses will break out and find a kink in the armor in the defense. Let's see if they do. One wide receiver on each side of the formation for the Revolution. They're going to send Suddeth in motion. Utah is going to pitch it to Chris Grant Jr., and they're going to be able to get a little bit of a body on him as he gets maybe just a couple yards on that run. And number 55, the, the linebacker in for Cree Higgins makes a stop once again. Second and eight here for the Revolution. As it looks like maybe they're going to try to shift the defense to the left side there. And they do indeed shift to that same side where it goes, but there is, there a, is flag a flag on the play. Let's see what the call here is from the ref. Face mask. And it's going to be a face mask there on the defense. Incidental. That's a five, it's only a five-yard penalty, Ted. Yep, Grant Hardaway there with the incidental face mask. As that's going to bring it to second and three. So a break there for the Revolution. As it's going to be I formation set. Single wide receiver at the bottom of the screen. Liam Hammer. Utah drops back. Pocket looking and finds his target that is Cameron Collier the fullback with a nice there to make a first down nice run by the fullback you don't see that very often because the fullback catches the ball down the field but great play by Louisiana yeah that was just a nice route ran there just a little go route once again looks like he just came out of the backfield kind of went off to the right side of the line a little bit and just shot straight up the field and was able to make a nice little play there almost like a little wheel route if you want to call it that there for Collier. As it's going to be an offset eye here. Two wide receivers at the top of the screen. Utah hands it off to Chris Grant Jr. He's going to maybe get a few yards on that. He gets a gain of five, and that's going to set up second and five. He fought for those yards, Chad. That was a power run. Just, you know, bringing defenders with them to get the five yards. Second and five here for the Revolution. As that's going to be a handoff, what looks like the backup running back is in the game right now. And the backup running back actually gets the first down there for the Revolution. I guess Chris Grant Jr. got a little tired. They bring in a backup for him. And he gets the first down. Yep, that was Fisher there on the run. Nice run there for him. Yeah, I mean, when you're the only running back and you're getting all that work, sub in every once in a while. So kudos there for Fisher getting his name called as his short route. And that was Ooh. off the – look like maybe the shoulder pad of of Leary to Vinci, but it might have been intended for Cam Collier. I, don't, I couldn't even tell where that ball – I just saw the ball floating around in the air. I'm not even sure who it hit that time, Chad. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it, if it, it looked like it hit Leary to Vinci. It might have hit – Collier, not 100% sure. Look at Collier was maybe the attended guy, but I formation set here for the Revolution on the 25-yard line. Utah drops back. 
Looking, finds Collier in the flat and is able to muscle his way past wow. the 20 to get the first down, Ray. What a play there by Cameron. Hey, Cameron Collier is doing a good job on this drive. I mean, two great catches in a row. Well, not in a row, but two different, you know, different plays and just powering his way forward. Look at that. That's, yep, a heavy, five, that's a heavy runner. Yep, five catches for 50 yards today. He's been throwing the ball 10 times. So very interesting to see that as Definitely. making his name known here early on in the season. Split back formation here as they're going to send Collier a motion. And that's going to be a handoff to Chris Grant Jr. as Shaw Allen was there first to stop him. And I got to tell you, Ray, if, I, if I'm watching that play just now and I am the Louisiana coaching staff, I would almost want to pitch that to the side that Grant Jr. was on. Second and nine here, spread formation, three wide receiver set for the Revolution. As it's going to be a pitch to the outside to Chris Grant Jr., and he's going to be able to take G Jack Napier with him, but Chris Henry there to get to him as it's going to be set up for third and five. I like the way Louisiana is using all their backs. I mean, they're using their fullback, they're using their backup halfback. I mean, it's just wild. Third and five here. They got to get to the two yard line as Utah drops back looking finds. He finds De Niro. And are they going to give him four progress? They are not. They are technically, but it's not going to be enough as that's going to set up fourth down. Could be a challenge here, Ray. I think you're definitely going to see a challenge, but wow. So it looks like the Revolution will be kicking a field goal. No challenge here by the coaching staff. Very interesting as. It looked like De Niro clearly caught the past the two-yard line. And Boudreau is going to kick us up, and it is good. So Louisiana takes a lead here. Ten plays, 58-yard drive. Chewed up a bunch of time off the clock. But once again, Ray, another drive ends in a field goal. I kids to these defenses. I mean, you can get, you can get in the red zone, but you're, you haven't nailed it to pay dirt yet. You're settling for field goals. Yeah, that's all that this defense has given up as the kick is up and is going to be taken by Fenimore from the middle of the end zone. Very interesting call here by Fenimore as he gets the 25. That's a fumble, no. and it looks like Louisiana's recovered. Oh, no. Disaster, Tad. What a break here for the Revolution as Fenimore had an opportunity to down that like five yards deep in his own end zone. Does not do that. Brings it out and fumbles it, Ray. And gives Louisiana a chance. All right, that'd be like two turnovers for Atlanta tonight. One interception and now a fumble. This time, the fumble serious. You're, I mean, you're one yard from the red zone here. Yeah, from the 21 yard line. Speaking of 21, number 21, Cameron Collier goes in motion as Utah drops back, looking, fires tipped away by the complete Chris Henry, was the one with the deflection. And Utah almost gave it right back to Atlanta on that play. Dangerous throw. Yep, dangerous throw indeed. As it's going to be second and 10 here for the Revolution. Let's see if they take advantage of this. They already are in field goal range. They would love to come away with seven. Offset eye here for the Revolution. As that's going to be a handoff to Chris Grant Jr. He breaks the tackle, gets to about the 15 maybe to the 14-yard line to set up third and short. And Chris, um, Chris Grant Jr. is doing a better job running the ball this, this this possession. Yeah, he's looked a lot better on this drive so far, at least in the past couple drives. As it's going to be third and three here, as we're going to send Collier a motion. As that's going to be a handoff, and that is that, that is the backup. That is Fisher again. As Shaw as Allen was, with a big stop there. Yep, nice stop there by Shaw Allen to set up fourth down, and it looks like Otis Boudreau once again is going to come out. He's been the star today, three of three, looking to make it four for four here from 31 yards out. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up and good. So Louisiana took the lead on the last field goal, a fumble. And they extend their lead once again by six 
as it's now 12 to six here. It's just been all field goals all the time here in the Bayou. And I would say it was just a one score game, but the way this has been going, this is a two score game at this point. Yeah, so far, I mean, this has definitely been a two score thing for sure if you're looking at it, as it's going to be received inside about the five yard line. Finnamore making sure he's going to hold on to the ball that time as he gets it out to the 36. That's good return by Finnamore. I think I'll be a little scared after that last return. You can see the, the numbers here for Finnamore on the return game today. As he averages about 37 yards of return, that's a pretty decent average there for return man. It's more than decent, Chad. That's doing really well, actually. Pretty good. Pretty good. I was just trying to keep him humble. <laughs> you know, that's all I was trying to do. First and 10 here. Let's see how Atlanta responds. They just gave up six straight points. Let's see how they respond here. There's a handoff to BDG. He's there got we a little go. bit of room on the outside. Nice run by BDG. He broke the tackle of Dante Grant, but not the second one for a gain of nine. I think that's the best run for BDG has, has had all night. Yeah, that was probably the best one. Up. Looked pretty good. As Blake Craze there. Blake B. Craze there with a the nice tackle. As it's going to be second and short for the Swarm. Two tight ends set there. As this could be another run here. And it is indeed going to be another run. Nice block, block there by Mitchell O'Brien and BDG had an opportunity to break that tackle, gets a big yardage, but nice tackle there by the defeat by the defense. Look at this blocking up front. Yep, definitely in take minute there with probably a touchdown safe and tackle right there. Yep, nice tackle there indeed by the strong safe to take Bennett. Haven't called his name tonight. As it's going to be first and ten here from the forty-seven yard line. As Dynasty drops back, looking over the middle, finds Kyle Finnamore. That's going to be passed down to about the 25. That's a first down for the Swarm. Great throw by Dynasty and great route by Finnamore there. And now Atlanta's in business here. Yep, Kyle Finnamore, four catches for 56 yards today. Been a pretty dependable target. Five targets to him, four catches, so not too shabby. First and 10, two tight ends set here out of the single back formation. As Dynasty is going to drop back. Pocket looking pretty clean. He's got time to throw. Tipped away. He was looking for Boo Chisholm, and that goes incomplete. That's on number 47, Dante Grimm. Got right in front of Boo Chisholm and was looking for the ball to come be thrown that way, and it was, and he just knocked it down to the ground. Second and 10 here for the Swarm. Mitchell O'Brien in the backfield. BDG down there at the bottom of the screen. Dynasty drops back, looking, fires over the middle. That is caught. Why not? Arrowhead touchdown. Boy, is he making an impact tonight, Chad. He's had some great um, pass catches in previous plays and comes up really big here with the first touchdown of the night. The 20 Overall selection, why not Arlette there showing you why he was one of the top first round picks here. He was the second tight end selected overall. And what a play there to give us the first touchdown of the night, Ray. Thank God we finally seen one. Hey, and just like that, Lance to take the lead right here with the extra point, Chad. Yeah, that is gonna bring out their kicker. It's gonna be up and it is good. So Atlanta. Responds with the first touchdown of the night. Five plays for 63 yards. A big touchdown pass there to that man right there. Why not Arlet? As he waves hi to mom. <laughs> and they scored quickly, Chad. Less than a minute and a half. Yeah, that was a score. very that was a very quick drive indeed. As now it's getting towards the end of the third quarter here, Louisiana with an opportunity. They're going to have to maybe get something more than a field goal, even though a field goal will get the lead for them. But they need touchdowns. They don't need field goals. This time, Reggie De Niro decides to kneel it in the end zone and get the touchback. Yeah, after watching 
Kyle Finnamore fumble, he's probably a little antsy of getting out of that end zone now. I would be too. <laughs> I don't blame him. I would as well. First and 10 from the 20. High formation set here for the Revolution. As Utah drops back, he's going to look short, and that's going to be Cameron Collier, maybe gain of a couple. Yeah, I'm going to keep, the, keep putting pressure on that O-line and forcing Utah to dump the ball off real quickly. He's been throwing the ball quickly all day long, Chad. So. Yeah, they've been really doing a good job, the coaching staff ho is, of getting him the ball and getting it out quick. As you're going to see this split back spread formation here, Collier is going to go in motion. Provide some help for that blitz. He does pick it up. Utah drops back, looking over the middle. That is caught. Lyric Da Vinci, first down to the 45. What a great catch by the defense. Da Vinci, he was well covered. Fincher was in front of him and still somehow came up with the ball anyway. Nice catch there by Da Vinci. Good tackle there by Boost Papineau, and that's going to do it. Here for the third quarter, you guys know what to do in the chat. Get your four 12s, 86 and 68s in the chat as Atlanta with a slim lead here by one, 13 to 12. We'll be back here on SFL on YouTube. The presentation of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account to the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. And we are back here in the Bayou. Chad, Roland, Rochelle, Colson here in the booth tonight. As Cameron Irvine is on the production for us. Thank you, Cam, once again. As you're going to see twins set there at the top of the screen here in the fourth quarter. As that's going to be handing off to, or handing off to Chris Grant Jr. Up the middle, gets a nice little run there. Sets up second down. And Chris Grant Jr. has been doing a really good job on these last two um, drives to get positive yards with each carry. Yep, and doing a good job so far filling in with Dwayne Sammons as he went out with the injury earlier in the ball game. We have not seen the return of Cree Higgins yet, the inside linebacker for Atlanta, as Hammer's going to go in motion. And there's going to be a handoff to the fullback, Collier. Get a couple yards on that, set up third is short. That's starting to your playbooks might open, but Louisiana, Louisiana likes to run the ball, apparently. Yeah, Louisiana is definitely set up for the run, as Cameron Collier, one of the better fullbacks in all the SFL. And they got some good blocking tight ends and a good line. So let's see what they do here. Third and two, Chris Grant Jr. in the backfield. As that's going to be a handoff to Grant Jr., and he gets the first down. Ooh. And he breaks that tackle. He's going to be past the 35, down to about the 30. That's going to be a first. For the what a great, impressive run. It looks like, you know, breaking tackles on the field, getting to the sideline. Then they finally just converge on him. The three defenders did not come out of bounds, basically. I mean, Moose Papineau really just had him, right? And then he just broke right out of that tackle. What a great run there. 12 carries or 46 yards so far. Here and for Chris Grant Jr. tonight. And Chris Henry just finally cornered him and made him go out of bounds by getting in front of him. But that was a great run. And that's going to be first and 10 here from the 31 yard line. As Utah drops back, looking over the middle. Ooh. And the defense was there in time to knock it out of hand. Yeah, Moose Pappen there with a big hit. My wing was going to catch the ball, knocked it out, knocked it out of his hands. Great coverage from defense there. And here is second and 10 here. Three wide receivers set. As you're going to see Collier go in motion. And as we pitch to Chris Grant Jr. to the outside, and that is going to be not really much of a gain there. That's going to be third and long. And there are a lot of people on that side of the field. I mean, the fullback had the block, but the block was on the outside. The another defender on the inside that just stopped the play right there. Big third down here for the Revolution. Bunch set formation at the top of the screen. Hammer down there by himself at the bottom of the screen. Utah drops back, looking, finds his target. That's Lyric Da Vinci. That's a first down, 12. 
Nice route right there, Vanshee. Their Utah's looking really good out there with a perfect pass. And then once, they're in the red boat, so once again, let's see if they can get a touchdown out of this. And just nice little simple route there, finding the soft spot in that defense. Utah able to get that throw perfectly to him. As Louisiana's looking to strike here, as you can see, the breakdown of looks like the Revolution have just really just hammered the middle of that defense. Definitely, you can, they're definitely doing the carrying the time of possession on tonight and look at this the pressure getting to him leo jefferson missed the opportunity but billy ray valentine cleans it up there for the second sack of the night you know what i noticed tonight is louisiana has very long methodical drives because of their run game when louisiana scores it's very quick so your defense is on the field a lot for atlanta yep and this defense is still making plays even though they've been on the field for quite some time nice play there by the front four of the Swarm as they set up second and 14 here for the Revolution. Bunch set. Utah drops back. Firing, and that's going to be in the end zone. Touchdown, Reggio De Niro. This time, Reggio De Niro beat the free safety Moose Papineau, got behind him, and Utah just makes a perfect throw to him in the middle of the end zone. Nice route there. Just look at that. Just another simple little go route. And De Niro with a touchdown there. And what a play there by Louisiana. They take the lead pending the extra point. They'll be up by six. This game gets getting wilder and wilder, Chad. First we see no touchdowns through three quarters. Now both two teams score a touchdown. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up and good. So 19 to 13, the Revolution take the lead back. As we talked about another long drive, 10 plays for 79 yards for the Revolution. So let's see how the Swarm react to that, right? 7-16 to go, Ray. And, I mean, they look good on their last drive. Let's see what they can do on this one. Is received just inside the end zone. As Finnemore is going to take it out past the 25 to the 28, as that will bring out Bryant Dynasty and the gang once again. As you can see here, Fenimore holding on to the ball this time as he did have a fumble earlier in the game. And it's going to be first to 10 from the 28-yard line. Single back formation, two wide receivers at the top of the screen. Louisiana might bring some heat. And there's going to be a handoff to BDG as he gets a gain of a couple. I like to see they're going to BDG at least to give them some reps here. Second and eight. And it's going to be empty backfield here for the Swarm. We haven't seen this formation tonight out of them. As Dynasty drops back. Looking short over the middle. Finds BDG. That's going to... Man, they're just short of that first down. I'm glad to see that BDG is now involved in the game. So they keep running the ball and making it more than just a one-dimensional offense moving down the field. Yep, 19-27, 227 yards today for Brian Dynasty. Looking good so far. As you're going to see I formation heavy set here, they're going to hand it off to BDG, gets a first down, and that's all he gets as it's going to be taken out about, about the 42-yard line. Yep, so now Atlanta's using BDG more. I like this. Opening up the um the playbook a little bit more, and I think you'll see some more runs out of him on this drive. Yeah, you definitely gotta get BDG involved, that's for sure. In this offense, no matter what. Dynasty rolls out. He's gonna throw it down the middle, and that's gonna be caught. That's Boo Chisholm. There past the 45 to about the 42. First down for the swarm. And there's, you know, when you need big plays, you go to your Hall of Famers, your star players, and I'm coming up big right now. Nice catch by Boo. Yep, great catch by Boo Chisholm there as he found that soft spot once again. And as we first and 10 from about the 42, you're going to see VDG here in the backfield. Two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. 
Yeah, it's going to be a handoff to BDG, Ooh. and Gary Clem was right there to break it up in the field for a loss of two. You know, that time, they, I guess they saw the run coming. They were ready for it, and Gary Clem making a great play. 14 carries, 52 yards tonight for BDG, averaging 3.7 yards a carry. So not too bad. Not the BDG we've seen in the preseason, but that's okay. As you're going to send Arlet in motion. As Dynasty, short drop, looking, fires quick, and that's going to be broken up, incomplete, intended for the tight end, Arlet. We see as defense is still coming that big here, making a third and long. Yep, so that loss, that loss of two there by Gary Clem, making that tackle, really putting the pressure here on the deep, on the offense of Atlanta. Single back quad set here. As Dynasty drops back. And they're not going to get, they are going to get to him in time. That's going to be a sack. There for the Revolution. Here we go, the replay, thank goodness. And it looks like, looks like Neil Rivers there, the other defensive tackle there, getting involved with his first sack of the season. Now you got a fourth in the country mile here, where they were forced to punt back to Louisiana, who just scored a touchdown. Yeah, this could be interesting as Louisiana, as we know, is really, let's just call it a run-first mentality type team. And with just under four minutes to go, or under four minutes and 20 seconds left, the ball is going to be on the 13-yard line. The Revolution have an opportunity to drain the clock out as we've seen them with long, methodical drives all night long. It definitely, Chad. I'm sure you'll see lots of Chris Grant Jr. and Cameron Collier here. Indeed, you probably will. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. High formation set here for the Revolution. Utah drops back, pump fake. Pocket still good, looking, finds his receiver. That was Cameron Collier, but that is going to be tipped away incomplete. That's what I said, they weren't going to throw the ball anymore. They go for one, and it's you know, nicely defended. Second and 10 for the Revolution. He's got a good shot there of Tommy Utah. Split back formation to spread. And as you're going to see, call your emotion. Utah rolls out. Looking. And looks towards his tight end, it looks like. Actually, it was not the tight end. It was Adam Banks. And that's going to be incomplete. And that would hit Jack Napier in the back if he just would have turned around. That could have been a pick six going the other way. Yep, and look for them to pass here on this down. It's third down and ten. They really need to extend this drive if they want to put any pressure here on the swarm. As you're going to see that single back bunch set here once again for the Revolution. They like this formation on third down. As Utah drops back, he's flushed out of the pocket. He's looking. He finds it over. That is caught. Oh. That is Banks with the catch. That's a first down for Louisiana. Chad, what a play. Jack Napier was, was there. We just, you know, was playing behind the defense, behind the uh, re receiver. I mean, he had to throw that kind of short to where Banks was going to have to turn around and make sure that the defenders were not going to be able to jump that route. Great throw there by Tommy Utah. Way to move his feet out of the pocket. Nice play there as Utah looks like he's going to change the play. As he drops back, he's going to move over to the right a little bit. Finds his target. That's Ooh. Liam Hammer. Another for Louisiana. And Diamond Black just never turned around, never saw the ball. He just was thrown him over the receiver's right shoulder for him to catch it. And just another nice little route there. Nice little throw. Throwing it on that side. Look like Blackwell could have had opportunity if he would have just been in the right position but he was not and Louisiana takes advantage of it nice catch there nice throw for the revolution offset eye here from the 45 that's a handoff to Chris Grant Jr. up the middle gets to midfield and that's going to be a gain of five that time Chris Grant Jr. got skinny got through the line picked up a couple picked up five yards 
This clock is just taken away, Chad. Down to three minutes. Yep, under three minutes to go here. This could become the Chris Grant Jr. show as they're going to try to get as close to two minutes as they can. But hopefully maybe be able to pick up a first down. If they pick up a first down here, Ray, this could be spelling doom for the Swarm as Chris Grant Jr. is trying to power his way through. He gets a gain of three, and that's going to set up a very intriguing third and short. That time he just kept moving. His legs kept moving forward, and he was very hard to bring down on that play, Chad. And let's see what the coaching staff of Louisiana draws up here for this. They need a first down. They're going to go heavy split back set. He's going to change the play at the line. Is it to the fullback or to Chris Grant Jr.? We'll see. And it's going to be to Jr. Up the middle, first down. It's actually Fisher, the backup running back, oh. coming in with the run. First down for the Revs. That's not the first time he's done that tonight. He came off the bench and getting the first down when it's really important here in the game and he's doing a good job out there very interesting play there leaving the backup running back to do it but we have just hit the two minute warning louisiana with a fresh set of downs looking to try to end this game tonight as we will be right back here on sfl on youtube and we are back down here in stacked up stadium in the bayou chad Rowland, rochelle colson here in the booth Cameron Collier, or Cameron Irvine, I'm sorry, on the production tonight. As you're going to see Levy Lease go in motion. Utah is going to hand it off on the draw play, and that looks like Fisher is in. As it's going to be up the middle, and Lana is going to use her first timeout. Um, things are getting serious here, Chad. If you're Atlanta. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see if they're if they're like keeping Grant Jr. out because that was Fisher's second carry. It actually looks like Grant Jr. might be back in. They're going to send Sutter to the outside. And there is a handoff. It's actually Fisher again. As it's going to be up the middle there for a gain of a few. And that's going to be another timeout to set up third and five. Hey, Chris Grant Jr. get hurt and we missed it? Or... <laughs> I don't think he got hurt. I think that it, they're they think they got this in the bag. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, Ray, but we'll see what happens. I mean, this is a bold move for him. Fisher is back there in the backfield once again. Third and five here for the Revs. And that's going to be another run to Fisher. He's going to be stuck behind the line, and that's going to be take it down. Leo Jefferson there with the play, and Atlanta's going to use their final timeout. It's going to be fourth down. A good stop by the defense of Atlanta forcing the field goal here. I'm a little confused why the backup running back was in, but, hey, I'm not the one calling plays out there. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, right, with, with Fisher coming into the game for three straight runs. When you got Chris Grant Jr. on the bench, very interesting call. Oh, they punt here. They weren't and this thing is range. high. As, oh. Man, that was a very interesting play there. <laughs> Boo Chisholm almost made a mistake there. He had to almost like jump ahead of them guys to try to catch that thing. And he did. He's like he, he held onto the ball for taking a big hit in the middle of the air. You're pretty defenseless out there once you leave your feet. So Atlanta right now was set this up. Zero timeouts for them. They got to get a touchdown to win the game, pending an extra point. They got a minute and 35 to go. Let's see what this offense can do. We know they can strike quick in previous seasons. And Dynasty's going to drop back. Looking to pocket collapse. Ooh, it's going to be another that sack. Way. That is not going to help you as that was big chance wall there with the sack. They're going to go no huddle here again. Second is 16. Dynasty drops back, looking, fires, finds his target. That's why not Arrowlet, and why not throw it to the young man? Seven catches for 116 yards today for the rookie tight end. Dynasty drops back, pocket collapses oh. once again. He goes. That's Gary Burney with his first sack of the night, and this is a be a big, big fourth down here for Atlanta. Oh, Tabby, I made it left and fourth down. You have to go for it here. It's game on the line.
and this is a huge play. And all the Revolution fans are standing here cheering for their defense. Fourth and six. Uh, Dynasty drops back. Pocket good. Looking. Finds his target. That's Booch. Hit them. You go to the Hall of Famer. Down to the, about the 47-yard line. They're going to go no huddle. Four wide receiver set here. Dynasty short drop. Looking. Finds his target. That is BDG. And he only gets a gain of a yard there. Clock is going to continue. 33 seconds to go here in the ball game. Four wide receiver set here again. And Dynasty's going to spike it. I think that was a smart move, spiking the ball there, Chad. That was a very smart move, I think. They, they were, I think the formation just not the one they want. They're going to be able to regroup, be able to get something going here. Third and nine. They hear the Revolution crowd on their feet. Defense, defense. Third and nine, 29 seconds to go. Big play here for the Swarm. Louisiana's defense playing back. Dynasty drop back. Pressure gets oh, to him, no. and he goes down again. Neil Rivers with the sack, and this is it. This is for all of it. Fourth and 14. As that's going to be a hand, fake handoff. Dynasty throws, and his drop. Incomplete. Fenimore, Dante Grimm hit him as he caught, and that's going to be a turnover. Swarm. Well, it's having the bagging effort here at the end. Just came up a little bit short. And big hit by number 47. Wow. Dante what, Grimm coming up huge. What a play there by Dante Grimm. I mean, that was really a... I was not expecting a play-action pass right there. And it was interesting that they come out in that. They, I don't remember seeing a single shotgun formation here for the Swarm all night long. And they're going to get the best formation in all of football, the victory formation here for the Revs, as they're going to come away here with the victory. One kneel down is all it's going to take, and the Rev fans can celebrate. They are 1-0 to start this new SFL era. What a great game. The call tonight, Chad, was very close the whole entire game, and defenses were coming up huge. Yeah, this was a defensive battle through and through. Each team was able to finally get a touchdown on the board, and as you see, the coach is coming out for a handshake, and the Revolution with the victory here. It was a close one, 19-13. And for that is going to be the end of it here, folks. As for Rochelle Colson and Cameron Irvine, this is Chad Rowland here. Thank you once again, and we'll see you next time on SFL YouTube. Good night, everybody.